Hello students, today my lecture is on system approach, the imperative character of education for the overall growth and development of an individual is now accepted by everyone. Curing illiteracy is the immediate problem in developing countries nowadays. Technology of education is being developed with the aim not only for making education more widely available, but also of improving the quality of education which is already available. Educational technology refers to a systematic ways of designing, implementing, and evaluating the total system of learning and teaching in terms of specific objectives based on research in human learning and communication and employing a combination of human and a non-human media to make the instructional system optimally effective with the help of system approach. System approach has been introduced in the field of education to manage, control, and improve the process and the product of education. It acts as a link between hardware and the software approach. Before going in detail to system approach, firstly, let us try to know what system means. Webster Dictionary defines a system as a regularly interacting or interdependent groups of items forming a unified whole. In simple term, we can say that system comprises of several interrelated components and a change in one component in its structure or function affect the functioning of all other components directly or indirectly and of the system as a whole. As for example, the human body has a digestive system for digesting the food and converting it into nutrients. Various parts of the digestive system put separately do not constitute the digestive system. Education is regarded as a system comprising of various components. Each of these components contributes to and supports the functioning of the system and the system approach is a systematic way of designing an effective and economical education system. The concept of educational technology is based on system concept and its application could be met optimally effective with the help of system approach. The methodology emerge out of the concept of wholeness. The system approach to design and analysis of teaching learning situation is the basis of great majority of modern educational technology related development. Instead of attacking the problem in an arbitrary manner, the system approach helps solve the problem systematically. It can be looked upon as a mode of thinking that emphasizes problem identification and problem resolution. System approach can be applied to many areas in the field of education, such as instruction, curriculum development, and so on. Now coming to the definition of system approach. Dear Dibs in the year 1972 says that the system approach is nothing more or less than what a competent, smart, adequate business executive adopts in the ordinary conduct of his business. Makridas in the year 1971 says that the system approach to management is basically a way of thinking. The organization is viewed as an integrated complex of independent parts which are capable of sensitive and accurate interaction among themselves and with their environment. Educationists define the system approach as an approach which aims at 
finding the most efficient and the economically cost effective methods for solving educational problems scientifically. The system approach provides a framework for all the factors that influence the solutions of educational problems or the achievements of objectives. System approach is a rational problem-solving methods of analyzing the educational process and making it more effective. The system approach in instruction is an integrated programmed complex of instructional media, hardware, and the personnel whose components are structured as a single unit with a schedule of time and sequential phasing. Thus, system approach is a systematic attempt to coordinate all aspects of problem towards specific objectives. In education, this means planned and organized use of the available learning resources to achieve the desirable learning objectives. The approach in general includes the following steps. A. An analysis of existing situation. B. Setting up of goals for the desired situation. C. Defining mechanism to evaluate the achievements of goals. D. Generating alternative solutions. E. Choosing the best possible solution through cost-benefit analysis. F. Detailing the design of the system. And G. Outlining the monitoring mechanism for the system. And H working out the solution. Now, moving to another topic that is components of instructional system. In the context of education, system is a unit as a whole incorporating all its aspects and the parts namely pupils, teachers, curriculum, content, audiovisual media and evaluation of instructional objectives. The teaching learning process is viewed as a communication and the control taking place between the components of a system. The system approach focuses first upon the learner and then course content, learning experiences, and the most effective media and instructional strategies. Such a system incorporates within itself the capabilities of providing continuous self-correction and improvement. Its purpose is to ensure that the components of the organic whole will be available with the proper characteristics at the proper time to contribute to the total system fulfilling the objective. In an instructional system, the teacher or instructor and the resources made used by him are included as component of a system. There is a provision for continuous evaluation and self-correction for realizing the stated objectives. The system approach involves continuous evaluation of learning outcomes and utilizations of knowledge gained by analysis of results of evaluation to suitably modify the plans of approach to achieve the stated objectives. Instructional system involves the following interlink and interdependent stages. A. Explicitly stated standards of output performances, including sequence behavioral objectives and the post-test. B. Plant input and processes involving structural learning material and the methods suitably geared to the need of a particular group of learners. C. Monitored output which is used to revise, improve and evaluate the instructional system providing feedback to the learner and the teachers and D. A degree of inbuilt flexibility to adjust to individual situations. Now, flow diagram. A flow diagram is a collective term for a diagram representing a flow or a set of dynamic relationship in a system. 
It is used to structure or order a complex system or to reveal the underlying structure of the elements and their interaction. Harris defined flow diagram is a diagram that visually display interrelated information such as events, steps in a process, functions, etc. in an organized fashion such as sequentially or chronologically. Planning is fundamental for systemization. System can be represented by drawing a map called a flow diagram. The relationship between the input, instructional strategies, and the output are shown by means of the simple flow diagram. A more extended examples showing in detail the path followed in general at the macro institutional level can also be illustrated in the form of a flow diagram as shown below here. Suppose we wish to develop a new course or instructional unit according to the system concept. We should begin with a survey and analysis of subject matter, identifying the skills to be learned and the characteristics of the learners the specific objectives, learning outcomes, and the performance criteria should be formulated. An inventory of human, technological, and financial resources must be met besides considering the limitation or constraints like time, money, facilities, etc. This is the stage at which we are concerned with media along with other materials. No doubt, course construction and the software production can begin only after completion of content, method, and media strategies. Available materials must be reviewed and examined. When no suitable materials are available, we must prepare a package in the form of a good kit. Field testing and validation provide opportunities to try out newly developed instructional package with a representative sample of students. While full-scale tryout is underway, we must observe closely all aspects and note further adjustment that may be needed. Implementation is the final steps of putting the validated material into full-scale operation. Continuous feedback should be obtained from learners at every stage which should lead to a further cycle of updating and modification. The least effective methods are recycled out and better materials are incorporated. Analyzes the subject matter, task, or problem. Study characteristics of learners. Define specific communication problem. Identify objectives, state enabling objectives, terminal objectives, and performance criteria. Explore available resources, human, technological, environmental, financial, anticipate possible limitation, constraints, and alternative. Specify methods, method, strategy, and media selection. Construct prototypes, program, pre-test, post-test, media production, and assembly. Validate program or prototype. Try out with a representative group. Analyze result. Implement recycle. Thus, the flowchart is an abstract graphical model of the process which helps to visualize the system at the planning or design stage. Advantages of system approach. Point number one, it provides a conceptual framework on which 
to build plans for implementing changes for education. 2. It helped to identify the suitability or otherwise of the resource material to achieve the specific goals. 3. It helps to assess the resources needs, their sources and facilities in relation to quantities, times and other factors. 4. Technology advance could be used to provide integration of machines, media and the people for attaining the definite goal. 5. It permits an orderly introduction of components demonstrated to be required for the system's success in terms of students' learning. 6. Residuity in the plan of action is avoided as continuous evaluation affords desired beneficial changes to be met. Now we can conclude the topic by saying this. The development and the use of a technology in the field of education is viewed in different ways by different people. Some claim it as the basis of a revolution in the educational system aimed at the improving the effectiveness and efficiency of education at different levels. On the other hand, some castigate it as a movement aimed at replacing the traditional teacher from the educational scene by sophisticated machines and gadgets. But in realities, the function of an educational technology lies in structuring the environment for learning. By use of modern methods, technique, approaches, media, etc. In simple words, educational technology is concerned with the development, application, and evaluation of system techniques and aids to improve the process of human learning. Thus, we can conclude that system 